this is just a review over sections 2.1 and 2.2. We're going to go over average rate of change, instantaneous rate of change, what they are, what they look like, how to find them, and also three conditions for limits to not exist. So looking at this first part here, we have average rate of change versus instantaneous rate of change. So first, whenever you see the words rate of change, you want to think slope. So for average rate of change, if we're interested on the rate of change between 2 and 4, for example, what that would look like on a graph is you have your value of 2 here, your value of 4 here. Average rate of change is just the line between them and the slope of that line between those two points. So how we find this, the value of the slope of this line, it's just the same slope formula that we've been using. Um, so the slope formula is just difference in the y's over difference in the x's. And that'll give you the average rate of change between these two points. For instantaneous rate of change, though, what if we're interested in what is the rate of change exactly at the point x equals 2? What's the slope of that line there? So this line here, it's called the secant line. It touches the graph at two points, not just the first time, but also a secant time. Um, the line here, though, is a tangent line. It touches the graph at exactly one point. So if we're interested in the slope of this line here, we're not able to use our slope formula because we only know one point on the line. We don't have a second point to use for a slope formula. So since we can't calculate the slope of this line directly, instead what we're going to do is we're going to get a bunch of points really close to our point of interest and calculate the slope of those um, points with our point of interest and see what those slopes are equal to in order to estimate what this slope is that we're actually interested in. Okay, so our step one is make a table. And like we just said, we're going to plug in points closer and closer to the value we're actually interested in. So here's my x. Here's my f of x. If I'm interested in the slope at x equals 2, I might plug in 1.9, 1.99, and then going from the other side, 2.01, 2.001, etc. So step one is make a table of values approaching um, my point of interest. Step two is actually find the slope between those values and what I'm interested in. So I'd find the slope between 1.9 and 2, 1.99 and 2, and so on, until I go through all my points. So brief recap, average rate of change represented by a secant line on the graph. To calculate average rate of change, you just use the slope formula between those two points. Instantaneous rate of change is represented by a tangent line on the graph, and you, and you estimate that by making a table of x values approaching your point of interest and then finding the slope between all those values. Okay, moving on to the three conditions for a limit to not exist. Our first one is if the right-hand limit is not equal to the left-hand limit. Using some shorthand over here. Um, and what that looks like on a graph is, let's say, left hand is going here, and the right hand, it jumped up, it looks like this now. Um, as you can see from the left-hand side, it's approaching a different value than what it is at the right-hand side. Now, a brief note about this, I could put an open circle here, I could put two open circles there, or I could fill one of them in, or I could have filled in this one. The only way this can't be true is if I fill in both of these. So if I were to fill in both of these circles, that means that this is no longer a function, because the function has two different y values at this same x value, right? So just brief note about that. Make that an open circle. Okay. Um, condition two for a limit to not exist is if the function is oscillating. That means that it's going up and down super, super quickly at this one point. You can't tell what value the function is approaching. Uh, an example of this is a function sine of 1 over x. So sine of x usually is a periodic function. It goes up and down at a regular pace. But the function sine of 1 over x, as it gets closer and closer to 0, it starts oscillating super, super fast up and down from both sides. <clears throat> this is a really crude drawing. But it goes something along those lines. So the limit as x approaches 0 of this function sine 1 over x doesn't exist because it's oscillating um, so frequently and so highly at that point. OK, third condition for a limit to not exist is if it's approaching infinity. And so what this might, oops, what this might look like on a graph is if there's an asymptote here, it could be approaching either negative infinity or it could be approaching positive infinity. Either way, <clears throat> the graph is going to start getting closer and closer to that asymptote, but it will never actually reach a value. Um, so because of that, the limit does not exist in that case. So this is a brief recap of 2.1, 2.2, and how to solve these types of problems. Hopefully this was helpful. 
I hope you found this video really helpful. The concepts covered in this video are true no matter what calculus class you're in, but all the sections and problems I referenced were from this textbook right here. And remember that if you're a registered Baylor student, we offer free tutoring on the first floor of Sid Rich. You can either schedule a one-on-one -on -one appointment online or just drop in whenever you're available during our business hours for free tutoring. For more information, feel free to visit our website.